you just also made me just think about how I'm, I'm looking at a picture of my mom and my dad and you got me there for a second. <laughs> I can't congratulate you enough on this. I thought it was so moving. There's a quote that I've kind of abided by when it comes to death and it's death may end a life, but it doesn't end a relationship. And I feel like this movie and the choice to have Jaden's character join you on that journey is the epitome of that. Whose idea was that? Uh, that was Lara and, Larry and Donna, the writers. Um, oh. You just also made me just think about how I'm, I'm looking at a picture of my mom and my dad and. You got me there for a second. It's the only quote that's ever helped me sustain uh, the loss of somebody I care about. I've I believe that. I've been super positive in helping uh, encourage other people to celebrate uh, the life and the relationship that you had and, um, and thinking of all the fond memories. But when, it, when it's something that you're dealing with, just sometimes it just, it's a little bit harder. Um, I always have the right thing to say, but sometimes I don't have the right thing to think to help me get over it, you know, especially in the morning when, you know, the first call I would ever make would be to my mom. But the relationship oh. in this movie, yes, is so beautiful. Obviously, I was honored to have Reed Miller play that part because he reminds me um, and, and so much of both of my sons. Um, mm -hmm. and obviously the, the connection between the two of them was the most important thing. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful yet tragic story. And we want to continue to, to spread Joe's message, uh, about, you know, how terrible bullying and intolerance is and the deadly effects that it can have. What did it challenge? You know, we know so much about your upbringing and I, you know, my sister lives in the North end of Boston. I'm very familiar with the environment that you were raised in with, with all of these siblings. Um, did it make you think about what Jaden would have maybe sustained had he grown up where you grew up? What would that experience have been like for him? Uh, I think it would have also been very difficult. There was not a lot of acceptance for anybody who was different. Um, and, you know, unless you lived in a melting pot like we did, where, you know, there were people from all walks of life who just kind of were all at a kind of disadvantage when it came to, you know, uh, money financially um you know so they just kind of grew up around people and were open and accepting to people but it was very difficult it's certainly something that i could relate to um and you know to, for Jaden to not have the love and the support that he needed in his own home uh must have just been you know terrible for him because you know yeah. if you don't get it at home and you're not getting it elsewhere you know and he was such a wonderful light and had so much love to share uh, and wanted to project that, you know, and he was a strong, strong boy, but uh, not having the support at home or the support of his dad, especially who he thought, you know, Joe really thought he was doing the right thing by trying mm -hmm. to protect him and shelter him. But, you know, you, kids need to be heard and seen and understood and loved unconditionally. That guilt and regret that he had to live with after oh. realizing he was probably more responsible than anybody for what happened to Jaden then, you know, that really sparked him to go on this mission and, and hopefully help prevent other people from experiencing that same thing. Did this change at all how you talk to your kids? I mean, did it change anything about you listening to them or were you always a pretty good listener? Uh, you know, I think it made me be a little less strict when it comes to certain things, but then you've got COVID and all this stuff and they don't really understand why they can't be with their friends and, you know, why, you know, school is that much more important, even though now they're having to do it on Zoom. And, um, yeah. But yeah, just to be able to hear them out about the stuff that they're going through. Um, you know, obviously my, my daughter, she's 17, she's about to be 18. Um, we had obviously lots of tough times and now, you know, there is a great line of communication there, which is fantastic. Sometimes she gives me too much information. <laughs> you know, I don't want to see, you know, the hickey on the neck and I'm like, oh, right. tell Dracula there's another way to show affection. <laughs> <laughs> a giant mark but you know it is what it is and um she's you know has a wonderful relationship with a really sweet boy and that that makes me Aww. happy but it took me a while to get to a place where i'm like comfortable with her having a boyfriend yep. you know i was always like no my girl but now i'm like well thank god she's with a really nice guy who treats her really well um well you're not only a dad you're mark Wahlberg, so i'll bet it's even tougher i realize too that it's like it's difficult for them i think there's pros to being um, having my last name, but there's a lot of cons. And, you know, I yep. realized when my son's like, dad, don't come out of the car at football practice. <laughs> right. You know, he wants to have his own identity and do his own thing or, you know, stop embarrassing me. Like, 
you know, I, I gotta, I gotta really be a, a understanding of that. I took it personally at first cause I just want to be there to support them. But like if dad's sure. sitting in the car and is supporting them in the way that they want or need at that moment, then that's, that's what I got to do. Before I go, can quickly, can you tell me a song that we'd be stunned you know all the lyrics to? I love the scene with you and Reed where you're singing Born This Way. What's a song we would be stunned you actually know? Um, I don't know if you'd be stunned because, I mean, look, every single word to the entire album, Adele 21, I know, because that's my <laughs> flight music. That's my go to bed at night when I'm on location music. Uh, that's my go-to comfort music. Carly Simon, Aww. You're So Vain. I just love the song. You know, it depends because I... And, old country songs like if i'm playing a guy like joe bell i had a playlist that i thought would be songs that joe would listen to and you know when i just made the movie father stew i had a playlist that i listened to and you know it was mostly really old country and my wife would get so upset because i'd have I'd <laughs> have to play it in the car and the kids would just they put their headphones in and listen to whatever they wanted to listen to but uh yeah i got a weird kind of so pe that people would think was strange but that i think is absolutely fantastic so Nothing well, this than Adele 21. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. You're a softie. This is fantastic. Mark, thanks. I hope the next one's in person. These days are long. And congrats on this. Thank you. You are so fantastic in this. Where did you start with getting into the headspace of this heartbreaking story and this young boy who just suffered way too much? You know, I think it was more importantly out of everything. It was doing everything in my power to best understand not only Jaden, but how to relate my own experience to his. Because at the end of the day, I can sit here and I can, I can tell you every single thing about my process, but the important thing is remembering that I'm not him right. and that I had to do my best to tell his story honestly while still having the respect of his legacy, knowing Jaden was Jaden and he was a life that can never be recreated. And I, all I could do was my best job to honestly paint my own picture there of here's how I relate. Yeah. And so it was, a, it was so much research. It was watching home videos of him, listening to his voice. I even had his, his old iPod with his music on it, like talking to his mom, talking to his brothers. It was just as much research as I can while still finding those defining connections between the two of us. You came to Oregon, I'm assuming more than once, and to meet with his family and to talk to his mom. Um, how did that help? And what was that like? I can't imagine looking at this amazing actor who's playing my son that I've lost. You know, it was, it was really hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was really hard because when, when we first met, I had already had my, my hair dyed and I was like in costume, like we were on set. It was so, it was a, it was a moment like I, I, I arrived on set and they were like, so just FYI, Lola's here, Joseph's here, they're all here. And I was already in costume and I was like, okay. Like I, I wasn't prepared for that, uh, but I was so honored that they were there. Like to have their support is paramount. And yeah. so, you know, I stepped out and I walked up and we both just kind of, no one said anything for a minute. Like it was just kind of a second of like taking each other in and I can't even begin to imagine, you know, what's going through her head in that moment. Um, but for me, all I could do was just be supportive and, and of course honored to be a part of their story and to get to tell it. Um, and I got to know her very well. I got to know his brothers very well. And they're just such a, a wonderful family who didn't deserve any of that. Yep. which honestly, you know, made me more driven to tell this story. You did him such a service in your performance. I, I can't even you. congratulate you enough. Um, Mark Wahlberg, I heard that one reason you were kind of instantly hired almost, he said he always gravitated back toward you, was because you got him so choked up just doing any scene with him. Could you tell, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm making Mark Wahlberg tear up. I've totally <laughs> nailed this audition. Like, I've got this. Like, I've got this. It was, you know, it was funny when, when I did my first read with them, both Ray and Mark, we, we cut and I'm like still trying to like, it's such a fever dream when I think about it. Cause I was so like so much happening, but I, I remember I did the scene and everyone was kind of quiet, excuse me. And Ray and Mark both went like, wow. 
And I was like, I don't know what that means. That's either a good <laughs> wow or a bad wow. Right. <laughs> and I was like, I'm just going to not say anything. Uh, but then after that, when uh, Mark was walking me out, he was like, I want you to know that I feel like I'm talking to my son when we talk. Oh. And, you know, it's this industry where it's never a thing until it's a thing. So for mm -hmm. me, it was so exciting to hear that, but also like, I can't get my hopes up. I just have to wait and see what happens. And luckily I met with them another two times and he then gave me the role on the spot, oh. but it was just such an amazing experience and just such a crazy, crazy experience. Well, my hopes are way up for your future after seeing this. I hope we get to meet in person uh, quickly. I yes. know they wrapped me. Where in Texas did you grow up? I'm from Plano. I grew up in Plano. Oh, wow. I, okay. So I super quickly, I, I okay. I, I, I was born in Chattanooga, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and then I moved to Lubbock, Texas, but I okay. spent like a, a lot of my like growing up in Odessa, Texas. Permian. Yeah. That was yep. our rival. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs>